Hi, welcome along to a short session um, to introduce the behaviour consequence ladder that has recently been launched by Cumberland FA and our three youth leagues. My name is Ben Snowden, I'm the Chief Executive of Cumberland FA and also the lead for positive football environment work within the county. Before I begin to provide so, an overview of the ladder itself, uh, I just wanted to provide some context and background as to the general overall picture in Cumberland around levels of behaviour. It's undoubted that levels of anger in the country have increased and whether that's because of COVID, because of the way of the world politically, whether it's because of the cost of living crisis or mental health issues or other areas, people appear, appear to be more angry than ever before. And as football is a microcosm of society, we can't expect that football will not be impacted by these increased levels of anger. When we are facing up with shop looking to place body cams on their shop assistants to protect them, we understand that football will have some issues around perceived levels of behaviour within the game. But it's also important to keep things in, in, in perspective. Football's often painted as a bleak picture. It's an easy news story and, new, and news art outlets are more, much more likely to report negativity than anything else. On social media, the algorithms that, that dictate will often reinforce messages or provide examples of fake news stories around this. So what is the actual picture in Cumberland regarding behaviour? Well, if we compare key areas from last season compared to the previous season, we'll see that dissent was down 15%. Dismissals or red cards were down 11%. Misconduct charges, which are based around more serious incidents, were down 27%. Misconduct against match officials was down 34%. If we then compare that to the, against the 6,884 games that were played in Cumberland last season, this means that there were dismissals or red cards in less than 3% of those games played. Misconduct in less than 1%. That means that 99% of games went without serious incident. 98% of games went without any improper conduct towards match officials. 95% went without any incident towards match officials at all. And 94% of games went without any incident whatsoever. Whilst we're, we're considering the perception and the reality, we also understand that sometimes statistics don't always paint the most accurate of pitches. As a county FA, the majority of our staff are out within grassroots football every weekend, either watching their own children play, playing football themselves, officiating at games, involved in clubs and leagues. So we do understand that there, there is a, an issue within local football. But the results from the stats do suggest that this is a vocal minority as, as opposed to what is a silent majority who do behave themselves. The reports and information that we receive, and certainly based on information that has come in and incidents that have been reported at the start of this season, would suggest that these incidents are more around undesirable behaviours, such as shouting, arguing, etc., as opposed to the unacceptable behaviours, which are assaults or threatening behaviour towards match officials or discrimination. But we understand that undesirable behaviour, if it goes without challenge, is likely to result in unacceptable behaviour. And we also understand that one major incident could have a negative impact that includes stopping people from playing attendant referee in the game. So it's important that we act now. And this led us to looking at something and it led to us creating the ladder. The ladder is based on a traffic light system 
which is delivered by the National League of the Year, the Young Elizabethan League. It's a collective approach between CFA leagues and clubs and teams with an aim to protect the game. It mainly focuses on fact based on proven CFA disciplinary charges. As well as looking at negative behaviour, it looks to recognise and reward that large majority of clubs who do create a positive environment. In essence, it gives teams a maximum of two chances to proactively address any behavioural issues. And there's clear support and sanctions in place at each stage, including the ultimate sanction, which would be to stop teams playing. If we look at the ladder itself, all teams start at green and can move down due to poor behaviour, back up due to good behaviour throughout the season. Teams will not know where the other teams are, only the club, the league and ourselves will be aware of their position on the ladder. It's a staged approach with more serious and comprehensive actions required as you move down the ladder. The league and CFA will have clear responsibilities to act and support clubs and clubs will also be expected to take responsibility and proactive actions themselves to tackle any poor behaviour. If we look at detail in the, in the ladder itself, level one is around good and desirable behaviour. These are teams who consistently demonstrate desirable behaviour and create a positive football environment. We'll understand this based on scores, feedback received by leagues and by clubs where teams have had no CFA misconduct charges at all. If a team is here, they will be regularly sent a thank you email from the CFA and any team who finishes the season within this section will be entered into a draw to win a free strip and other spot prizes. At this stage and this level of the ladder, we just expect and hope that clubs and teams maintain the standards and that clubs pass on positive messages to team members and supporters alike. Rung two of the ladder is seen as where a team have some minor issues and it's seen as an informal warning. This could be based on poor practice, on consistently poor behaviour marks, on referee reports, on team reports, but where no official charges have been raised by the CFA. At this level, an email will be sent from the league and CFA to the team contact and club secretary just to remind them of the expectations and standards but there'll be no formal action. At this level, we're expecting teams and clubs to communicate with the parents and with the players and with the coaches to remind them of the, the individual standards expected. And a team would be placed here for four weeks. And if there's no other issues, no other reports, then they will move back to green. Room three of the ladder is yellow and is based on undesirable behaviour and is the first official step and is seen as a written warning. This is where a team receives a proven misconduct charge, which are not based on red or yellow cards or sin bins, but is about the improper conduct of players, coaches and or spectators during games. At this level, a formal letter will be written by the league and the CFA with clear actions required to be undertaken within a defined timescale and evidence is completed. Teams at this level may also receive a potential visit from a CFA a match day observer. Clubs and teams at this level are expected to complete their actions and the team will remain here for four weeks before moving back to green and level one. Level four of the ladder, or an amber orange level, is very poor and where, the, poor and where there's continued or serious undesirable behaviour. This is a second official step and a verbal warning. This is based on a team receiving a second proven misconduct charge or where a team has a proven referee abuse misconduct or a discrimination case. This level, there will be a joint meeting with the league and the CFA and the team will, uh, will receive an unannounced visit from a CFA or league official to a game. Clubs and teams are expected to meet with the league and CFA 
and a proactive response required from the club and the team is expected in line with any agreed actions from this meeting and this may include the delivery and attendance at the CFA workshop. The team, clubs and teams must complete these actions and the team will remain here for four weeks before moving back up to yellow for four weeks and then back to green. If a team reaches level five or red, this is classed as unacceptable behaviour and is the final step in sanction. This is based on a team receiving a third proven misconduct charge or a second proven referee abuse case or discrimination case. Clubs and teams would be informed at this level that they are likely to go to an SGM where members will be asked to vote on that team's membership within the league. At this level, significant action and response would be required by a club and team, which may involve the removal of an individual from the team or from the club. But at this level, the ultimate threat is that teams will be stopped from playing within their respective leagues. To support the initiative, based on the, the age groups and the levels that you can see within the respective leagues on this slide, we've also included a question which will allow us to take out more feedback from clubs around poor levels of behaviour and undesirable behaviour. In a similar way to referee scores and to the already be, um, respect marks that are within full time, clubs will be asked and able to provide some feedback. We'll also be launching a new way to report um, teams through an online system, which should provide an ease and increased level for us to gain more information around teams. Ultimately, this, in, this initiative is not seen uh, by us as passing any responsibility. We ultimately are aware that as a county FA, we are responsible for action. But we understand that we can't do this alone and that we do need your club's help to make a real difference and protect the game. Thank you for your time and listening and observing this presentation. If you do have any questions, then there will be a frequently asked questions form that you will be able to look at based on questions from the online presentations. Alternatively, please email myself at development at cumberlandfa.com. Thanks for your time.